There was a question that was not posed to you just here that I'm gonna pose to you now and it relates to something you learned just last week. It was to do with outliers. Do you remember what outliers are? Could someone give me like a one sentence or one phrase definition of what an outlier is? Hmm. Michael, what do you reckon? Something that lies very far outside the data. Don't you love it when a word tells you what it is? Okay, now this is pretty straightforward. If you have a look at this, right? I guess you would say someone who has a height much down below 150 centimeters or far above 194. I mean, even 194, I feel, is actually very, very tall. Miss Doxinsky's over there is almost that height, but not quite, okay? So how do we work out what an outlier is? You guys actually learn at least one way, not just like look at the data and have a guess. You learn a way to calculate it, Bao. Okay, so can you all go back to, did you write this down? Well done, Bao. If you look at the first quartile, right? Sometimes we call this the lower quartile. And if you take away, can you say it one more time for us, Bao? The interquartile range, yeah, okay. If we go to the lower quartile and then go lower, right? Anything underneath that we would say like, whoa, that's, that's pretty down, out of the way. This is the lower part. How do we get the other side? It's symmetrical to this. It would be the, yeah, the upper quartile, which is Q3. What's the one in between, by the way? Q2, special name. It's the median, one in the middle. Instead of subtracting, because this is up at the top of our data, we would, we would add, right? Same deal, one and a half times the interquartile range. Okay, now, I'm coming back to Sebastian's question. He said, what even is standard deviation? Okay, it's a way actually to understand how spread out the data is and it helps us actually unpack this a little better because this is not the only definition or not the only way to calculate an outlier. You can say, these are the, uh, you could call these the low outliers and you can call these ones the high outliers, if you like, anyone who's outside of this, okay? But we can actually use, let's not worry about this for now. We can actually just talk about this as one big concept. We can actually use the standard deviation to help us define what an outlier is, but it works in much the same way as going low and going high. So you've probably got this written like in last week's work, but can you write it for me again because I want to define it in a different way in terms of the standard deviation and we'll use this set of data to help us, okay? Can you write me again? Um, for this set of heights, we've got a mean, an X bar of, what was 170, 170 what? 0.6. And then we've got a standard deviation or you can actually use a sigma, that's a Greek letter like so, except my whiteboard mark is not doing great. And I think from memory you said it was 10 point something, right? 10.2? Thank you very much. Okay, now, what we can do is use this same idea here and say, well, let's just go like up and down, okay? We would say, if you are one standard deviation away from the mean, so this is a range, right? So we would say, let's call this one standard deviation within the mean. So what I'm doing is I'm using that X bar and I'm saying let's go down and let's go up and see what range we get, okay? You're gonna need your calculator for this one. If I go down one standard deviation, so 170.6 take away this, it's easy numbers for now. In this case it would be 160.4, right? I didn't calculate these beforehand, I'm just hoping that I'm doing this right on the easy numbers. There's my lower boundary for one standard deviation away. How high do I go? If I add a standard deviation, how far will I get? 180.8. Thank you whoever designed this question for giving us easy answers. Okay, now this is within one standard deviation of the mean. Have a look over again at the data. How many people, how many U12 students are within this range? Have a look. We've only got the classes, I know, but check it out, like let's just treat that as 160 to 180. How much of the data have we captured? A lot, right? Uh, if we call this 160, right, uh, down to 180, it's here, yeah? Can you go ahead and do a quick calculation for me? 27, 31, 12, 15. Um, I don't even know what the total number of students is, but you can help me work that out as well using your calculator. If you can't quite recall, uh, you should be able to go to shift one back to variable and then I think N will tell you the total number. 
Um, how many people have you got in there? How many, again? Like, actually tell me how many people we have in here. 85, just in this range, okay. 85, and what's the total number of people? What's our population for this? This is 85 out of how many? Someone gone in, don't add it up. Your calculator's already done it, right? 145. 145, thank you very much. Okay, so this is more than half of the people. More than half of the people are within one standard deviation, okay? Let's go further. If we go two standard deviations away, two standard deviations within the mean. So now I'm going to start from x bar again, but this time I'm going to subtract 20.4, and then I'm also going to add 20.4, right? So this new range will be 100 and. I know it's Monday morning, but you guys can do it, right? 150.2, 150.2, all the way up to. It's this plus 10.2, isn't it? That's an easy way of doing it. So that'd be 191.0. Okay, now I'm going to ask this question again. We're going further out. We're starting again from the middle, it's around here, and we're expanding, right? So this is going to be, well, let's see, 150. So in fact, that goes all the way down to all of these people, and then we go up to 191. So actually, I guess we'd call it there. How many people is that? It's everyone except for three. Yeah, so what did you tell me the total was? 145? So what's this now? How many people? 142 out of 145. Okay, now I don't need to go a third standard deviation because I would capture everyone, yeah? But this is, well, actually can you go ahead and put that in your calculator? What percentage is that? 98%? 97.5? What do you got? Yeah. Um, would you get to 180.8 and 190? Oh, the, wait, these numbers here? Yeah. Yep, so, okay, great question. In much the same way that we used interquartile range as a measure of spread, right? Standard deviation is just like a better measure of spread, a more accurate one. So in much the same way that here I went from a number and then I added the interquartile range, here I'm going from the mean in both cases and I'm adding some number of standard deviations. In this case, I added one of them. Uh, which took me up to 180.8 from here. In this case, I added two of them, which took me higher. Sorry for the bad marker. Okay. Now, I'm going to close this off, and then we're going to have a look at some different data. This idea of using the standard deviations to work out outliers. We can see within two standard deviations, we pretty much, we almost capture everyone. Okay. The technical definition for low or high outliers using the standard deviation is outside or outliers are outside, again because we said they lie outside, two and a half standard deviations. 2.5, this thing is gonna drive you crazy. Maybe I'll just write over the rest um, on my iPad. Outside two and a half standard deviations, if you've got someone who's outside of that, you would class them as an outlier, right? Now, this two and a half, that one and a half, to some degree it's kind of arbitrary, right? It's like, why did someone say 1.5? interquartile ranges and not 1.4. Why is it 2.5 and not 2.6? Um, it was chosen because this captures, you know, what most data is like, but it's not a guarantee. We always have to interpret. Does that make sense?